what's up? I got something kind of cool. I've been known to dumpster dive every now and then, and I got an actual CRT TV. I know it's, it's old fashioned and out of date and it's thicker than it is wide, but it's the only way, not the only way, but the, the best way, presumably, to play vintage games. So, I wanted to just kind of show, uh, show it off a little bit, my little setup here. Let's see if I can get this camera set up right there and turn the TV on. Come on. There we go. Awesome. This TV has been in a, uh, a TV station for most of its life. Oh, gosh. That brings back memories. I'm going to tilt you up a little bit so you can see the, the whole screen there. All right. What game should we start off with? Actually, let's do something a little bit fun here. I have I have Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. You wouldn't think they would be that different. Let's find out. All right. So this is Pac-Man on Atari 1600. He's not even a circle. He's just kind of like a square with edges. He doesn't even turn around. The ghosts are basically see-through. The, the map is sideways, but that's to be expected on a, uh, a horizontal TV there. So it's as basic as you can possibly get. You would think this would just because be because of the um, limitations of the Atari um, 2600, but we'll we'll see how that shapes up when we check out Miss Pac-Man. All right. Okay. So Pac-Man was 1981. Miss Pac-Man. Is 1982. Only a year different. Let's see how it looks. She's actually a circle. Can you see that? She's actually got rounded edges. And she turns. Hold on. And it actually has the Pac-Man music. A year difference in just programming technique and learning how to program for uh, the best video games possible. That, that's all it took back in the day, was just a year to completely change it. The ghosts are actually visible. We actually have the little exits on the side here, and it doesn't take forever to walk through them. We have sound going on. How crazy is that? That just, just a year after this one, you were you were going all the way up to this. All right, let's let's try something else. What else do we got? Oh, we got the. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna put Pac-Man up. We got the classic here. We got Frogger. Let's check it out. This is one of the type of games that you actually have to reset the game before you can start it. All right, here we go. This is a fun one. I had never really played this um, before I I got this 2600. I know it's it's pretty much everyone's favorite game when they think about Atari, who's actually who, who like had one when they were a kid. Everyone asks, uh, did, you remember Frogger? So, like, this is possibly the game for the Atari 2600. And it's a good one. It takes simple controls, but it uses them very well. The graphics are 
good for what they are. I mean, let's... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. All right, let, let's see when this came out. This was in 82. So they had already kind of gone through a lot of the learning that they went through with Pac-Man um, to figure out how to... Uh, how to best utilize the, the system here. All right, let's see. Let's do another frog game. I bet you didn't think there would be more than one frog game on the Atari 2600. But no, this is Frogs and Flies right there. And it actually doesn't have a front label. I don't know if it ever did, but it doesn't. And actually, look at that. It's a weird shaped cartridge too, where Pac-Man and everything else, you're used to having the, the rectangle cartridges. This has a weird little extension there but it goes in just like any other game and plays so this is frogs and flies on the 2600 so that's me look at that you're just jumping from lily pad to lily pad sticking out your tongue you jump just by moving side to side and how how high you jump depends on how long you hold the button. Hold on, I think there might actually be a different way to play this one. Well, maybe I'm not... Huh. Alright. Anyway, this is Frogs and Flies. So who would have thought there'd be more than one frog-themed game on... <laughs> Really, any console, especially one that came out 30, 40 years ago. Oh, what else we got? You got Donkey Kong, which is interesting to me because obviously Donkey Kong is a Nintendo IP. And um, this is an Atari, so Nintendo Atari already cats and dogs kind of, I know. But this is even more interesting, Coleco. Coleco had their own competing system for the Atari 2600. They had the ColecoVision. But apparently, they still produced Atari cartridges. This is just ridiculous. So you have three different cooks in the kitchen for this one. Let's see if it stands up at all to what you'd expect. Oh, yeah, this, this one sometimes doesn't like to play. There we go. Let's see what we got here. All right, very simple graphics compared. Look at... Look at Donkey Kong up there. He's just like a, a big red blob. He doesn't even look like a, a gorilla. The sound is lacking, to be sure, compared to the NES. But the NES is also a much newer console by comparison. Ugh. Is it just me, or did it seem like the notes were just a little bit off there? Like, is it's not quite right. Of course, you don't have the do 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 that you get with uh, normal Donkey Kong on the NES or um, a cabinet. Alright, let's see what happens when we save her. All right. Let's see, the weirdest thing for me here is just Donkey Kong up there. He's just a a big red blob. He doesn't even look like a monkey or a gorilla or anything else. But anyway, that's Donkey Kong, a Nintendo property for the Atari 2600 made by Coleco. Who would have thought? All right, what else do we have? This is one I've had fun playing, Spider-Man. Um, also a kind of interesting looking cartridge. It has that slant on the front there. I have almost no idea how to play the game, but it's well designed enough. Hold on. That's awesome music at the beginning. Okay. Oh, well, see, obviously. Uh, yeah. So what I think you have to do is press and hold. Oh, uh, that's it. You have to press and hold in a direction and shoot to, to shoot a web. Then you climb the web like that. And you can go in different directions. Oh, as long as you... Oh. But you can only grab on... Oh, gosh. I think I can't swing over people either. Alright. 
yeah, you can't swing over people. But you're just climbing the building, and eventually we get to this little area. And there are bombs over there, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with them. Oh, man. So not to mention it's just difficult to climb. Ah, uh, anyway, you get the picture with that. All right, let's, let's end on a high note here. This is Centipede. This is right up there with Frogger as games that go on Atari. Of course, both of them had um, cabinet, um, arcade cabinets before this, but these are like the classic um, Atari 2600 games. And I will say that playing on a CRT TV is a completely different experience. When I played on my, um, my, my 4K smart TV, it's, uh, it's obviously looking for more information than what's here. And so it's, it's having to fill in the blanks and actually you're seeing a lot more noise on a newer TV. And, and this, it only, it only has so many pixels. So it, it, it kind of smooths it, oh gosh. Anyway, it kind of smooths it out better, and it just looks better. I mean, it's sharper. It was, it was designed for a CRT TV. It's just what it's good at. This, this is really the, the pure experience for vintage gaming. Let's, let's see if I can finish one level here. Oh, gosh. I got lucky. Oh, that darn spider. Anyway, so any, I just wanted to, to share this kind of experience with you of of playing video games on a, a, a 40 year, oh gosh, well, that was interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to share this experience with you and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for watching.